we are in week two of the Look and See series. My name is Karen. If you don't know me, I usually hang out with the sixth and seventh grade girls, and I'm also one of the pastors on staff here. So super excited to learn together with you tonight. Starting with a question, and I know I'm going to get thrown under the bus at some point with this question, but um, what is your favorite adventure book or movie? Favorite adventure book or movie? Yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming. Awesome. Somebody else. What? The Little Toaster? I'm pretty sure The Little Toaster is not an adventure movie, John. It is? All right, all right. I've been, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know nothing. I know nothing about adventure. All right, somebody else. Return of the King. Okay. I didn't hear you. Jurassic Park. All right. Will like Star Wars. Okay, I know, but I just know you like Star Wars. All right, so here's the thing, okay? I'm going to admit something to you. And those of you who know me already probably know this about me. I don't like adventure movies, okay? It is not always my favorite. I don't, I've never watched Star Wars. I tried to watch a Marvel movie last week. I watched one Star Wars movie, and it was the worst three hours of my life. And I watched Captain America last weekend, and I mean, I liked it, but it was not something I'm like, oh, I got to watch more of that. All right. All right, all right, all right. So those of, uh, those of you who do like adventure have a fascination with stories about the exploration of the unknown. I am a big fan of the predictable. Okay, I really enjoy a Hallmark movie where you know exactly what to expect, right? You watch one Hallmark movie, you've seen them all. They all have the same formula. You know exactly what time the kiss is gonna happen. You know exactly what time the big fight is gonna happen. It's all the same. I like that. <sighs> Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. All right, the middle schoolers were totally silent on the Hallmark thing. But whether you like Marvel or Mission Impossible or Star Wars or the Chronicles of Narnia, we're all drawn to stories where characters are thrown into this unfamiliar world, exciting adventures, and new discoveries. So take 60 seconds, talk to the people around you. What's your favorite adventure movie, favorite character, and something they learned? All right, 30 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. All right, you are done. All right, I want to tell you about one of my favorite, one of my own personal adventure stories, probably one of the greatest adventures I've ever gone on. Again, because I don't like adventure, so I don't do it enough, okay? Admitting it. A few years ago, my dad asked all of my siblings and myself if we would go zip lining at Bristol Mountain. Has anyone ever been to the zip line course? Not the aerial course, but the zip line course. Okay, so a couple things to know about me. I don't do adventure well, okay? I am terrified. Of, of trying new things. I'm working really hard at it, but it makes me nervous. Ice skate, wouldn't think about it because I know I'd be on the ground hurt. Roller skate, never. Skateboard, no. Hoverboards, why were they even created? I don't understand. So people can fall? I don't get it. Anyways, I 
said yes to going zip lining. Okay. A couple important things to know about that. It was literally the second weekend it was open. Okay. The second weekend. That means there were like a few people that went before us, not like hundreds of people who had been out on this course before me. Just, just a handful of groups had gone out before us. Also, I don't enjoy heights or flying across gorges or jumping in faith that a piece of wire is going to hold me up. But I said yes. So we went, and it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Now, the first time, I was pretty nervous. I jumped out. They made me go first because I was terrified. So they thought that was the way to solve it, was to make me go first. It was awesome. Second one, amazing. Third one, my dad went first. And if you know anything about zip lines, right as you get close to thinking you're going to like hit a tree, this piece of something catches you and stops you. I don't know the terms. It's supposed to stop you, and you're supposed to ease into the platform. It did not catch my dad. It hooked, and it kicked him right back out into the middle of the gorge, OK? So I'm on the other side watching my dad hanging over a gorge, OK? Not really excited about heights. Still not really 100% sure that this piece of wire is going to hold me up. Watching my dad. The, gu the guide said, don't worry. Every time we've done this, the whole like five times before, every time we've done this, one person in every group gets stuck. Not a big deal. Just takes half an hour or so. We'll get him. It's fine. Only happens once per group, OK? So they get my dad. He goes. My stepmom goes, and it's great. I go, and guess what happens? I get kicked back, hanging over the gorge. I did not die. Spoiler, I'm here, OK? So I was not afraid, however, because I had learned from my dad's experience exactly what would happen. And I was able to see it. And I was so thankful for that. And the rest of the time was amazing until the very last platform. And if we have time at the end, I'll tell you what happened there. But I just did. All right. So adventures are fun, but one of the reasons that adventure stories stick with us is because of how much we or the characters in the stories learn along the way. Our love of adventure is tied to our curiosity. We want to know what's out there, what's left for us to discover. This is true for the world that we live in and the imaginary worlds we can explore through stories. But it's also true when it comes to our faith. When it comes to God, there are a lot of things left for us to discover. This is exciting, but like most adventures, it can be a little scary. So you might have questions about God or Jesus or how your faith impacts your life. And you may wonder if and how God could have created the universe or why an all-powerful God would care about you and me or who Jesus really was, or what we're supposed to think about or do with the Bible. Or you may be the person that other people go to with their questions about God because they know that you're a Christian. Just like our favorite adventure stories, there are some unknowns involved in following Jesus. But if you're ready, I hope that you'll engage your curiosity, look and see what you discover. So I'm going to ask a question tonight, and it's what questions do people have about God? What questions do people have about God? Some might tell you that having faith means that you don't ask hard questions about God because all you need to do is trust. But I'm not one of those people, and neither are most of your leaders here, I would think. Questions aren't off limits. After all, if Jesus can't handle our questions, is he really somebody that we can trust? In order for our faith to grow and deepen, we have to ask questions. So if you're comfortable, I want to hear some of the questions you have about God. Disclaimer before I take your questions, we're not going to actually answer all these questions tonight. This is just purely an exercise to show that we should ask 
questions. So give me some of your questions about God. And don't make me, like, pull them out of you because that's really rough. <laughs> that's not very nice, Will. Come on. There's got to be a question about God. Silence. All right. Why is anxiety a thing? Ben. Good, Ben. Listen, I'm going to turn around in 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds, four seconds, and I better see another hand. Come on. Hannah. More. Come on. Will. Can you can you just repeat it one more time for me? Anybody else? Yeah. I got you. I got you. I under once you explained it, I thought it was good too. All right, so thank you for participating, those of you who participated. Who here isn't really sure how to answer some of these questions? And literally every single person's hand should be up, including the leaders, because we are still learning too. What I want you to see and understand is that you can believe in God and still have questions. I can study the Bible and I can go to church my entire life and do you know what's going to happen? I will still never, ever learn all there is to learn about God and I'm still going to have questions until that moment when I get to heaven. As a follower of Jesus, you may feel like you need to have all the answers in order to talk about your faith with your friends, but you don't. God doesn't expect us to have all the answers. But God is calling you to help others find the answers that you've already found. When it comes to adventure, Jesus and his followers, the disciples, lived out the greatest real-life adventure stories ever. From miracles to walking on water to seeing raging storms completely calmed. Following Jesus was a wild ride. But this whole adventure began with one simple invitation from Jesus. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So I'm going to open up to, um, that's okay, I'll get that later. Um, Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. I'm going to give a shameless um, thing here. I love the Bible app. I think it's amazing that we have the Bible at our fingertips all the time, but I'm a huge fan of opening up our actual Bible, and really encourage you to do that and to carry it with you because, man, it's incredible. And I said this to um, a really awesome guy that impacted my faith journey, and I know he impacted Brian's faith journey, um, once told us he referred to it as his old friend. And I love that, is the more I study and the deeper I go and the more I use it, the more worn it gets and the more I just want to spend time with it. So, spend time with your Bibles. Matthew 4, 18 through 22. You're welcome. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once 
left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called to them too. They immediately followed him, leaving their boat and their father behind. This wasn't Jesus' first encounter with these guys. Other books in the New Testament talk about the times that they had met before this. Plus, these fishermen, they knew Jesus. They knew about him. They would have known him as a local religious leader or a rabbi is what it's called in Jewish culture. Even before he called his first disciples, Jesus was known for teaching people about the things of God. It was common for a teacher or a rabbi to have a group of people who followed him and learned from him, kind of like a mentor. What was uncommon, though, was Jesus' choice of followers. They weren't scholars in religion. They weren't students of scripture. They were young. They were ordinary. There was nothing special about them. And they were just fishermen. But when these fishermen looked at Jesus, they saw something not everyone else could see. They saw that Jesus was special. So they made the choice to follow him. They heard him, they believed him, and they wanted to continue learning from him. The disciples spent time following Jesus, and it was kind of like an internship, but like way more intense. They traveled together, they experienced difficult times together, they ate meals together, they witnessed miraculous events together, they discovered about things about God together. The disciples weren't just following God for their own benefit, though. Jesus expected them to take what they had learned and share it with others. This wasn't just a new hobby for them. This was a dramatic shift in change in their lives. After Jesus died and rose from the dead, he challenged his followers to do a few things. First, continue on their great adventure after he left earth. Second, teach others like he had taught them. Third, make more disciples like he had done for them. And fourth, share his message of salvation in their communities, in their country, and throughout the world. Hopefully those all sound familiar. Just like the disciples, when our eyes are open to the truth of Jesus, we're invited to learn from him and then share what we learn with others. The book of Psalms is um, a book full of honest poems and songs about figuring out life and following God. And if you've read them at all, you know, like, you go from, God, you're so amazing and wonderful, to why do you not love me more? Why am I in this horrible pit of despair? To I am so angry at you, God, over and over again throughout the Psalms. And that's really kind of cool because it reminds us and shows us that God can handle any of the emotions that we bring to him. So the Psalms are um, written by someone who knew God but lived before Jesus did. They show us how important it is to think deeply about the greatness of God. Listen to Psalm 111, verses 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember his wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. Although the psalmist never knew about Jesus, we do. And Jesus makes this song even more impactful, and powerful. When we begin to learn from Jesus, we discover just how great God is. Learning from Jesus makes us think about and ponder and wonder and remember just how amazing God is. What is so great about God? Share with the people around you real quick one thing that is so great about God.
All right, come on back. Who can share with me something that is so great about God? One thing that's so great about God. Ben. He'll never leave you. Truth. Will. He's trusting. Hannah. Sends people your way when you need them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank goodness for that, right? Anybody else? Maddie. He's strong even when we aren't. Hannah. Fights our battles. God is so great, so big, and so amazing. It's shocking, really, that Jesus was able to show us how much God cares about the details of our lives. Yes, Jesus wants us to ask our big questions about God and the world, but this might be the most important thing we could ever possibly learn, that we are loved by a gracious, compassionate, and incredible God. Beyond that, it's okay that we don't know all the answers. God is kindly and patiently and lovingly inviting us to ask questions because as we follow Jesus, Jesus teaches us new things. And that's our big idea. Jesus teaches us new things. Throughout my life, and I'm sure for many of you, I've had many different experiences where I was keenly aware of how good the character of God is. I remember one day last year, um, music is a really big part of my life and song lyrics speak to me all the time. And so this one particular day, I was sitting at a stoplight. I can't remember exactly what was happening in my life at the time. And I was listening and singing um, the song, Goodness of God. And before I knew it, I just was like weeping in my car as, these, as I was singing these lyrics. Because all my life, you have been faithful. In all of my life, you've been so, so good. With every breath that I'm able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And what was going on in my mind as I heard and sang these words was the way God has continually blessed my life. The way he continually demonstrates his loving kindness to me. The way he's protected me through some really poor choices. The way he has called me to ministry and made it possible the way he has brought just the right people in my life at just the right time. Now, I want to be clear about something. Asking questions isn't merely to help us gain more knowledge, right? So when we ask questions, I just, I was telling the middle schoolers, I was asking my trainer to explain the whole electrolyte idea to me because I didn't understand it today. And so I was just like, firing questions to her. Like, what's an electrolyte? Why do I need it? What's it going to help me do? All of these things. I still probably can't explain it to you. Doesn't matter. I'm striving to get the knowledge, okay? But what? Thank you. Okay. But, so we will get more knowledge, but the really important things about asking our questions about God is not necessarily the answers to our questions. It's that we learn about who God is. The adventure of getting to know God is never ending. We always will have more to learn. So I want to encourage you tonight to think about this. What do you usually do when you have questions about God? What's one big question you still have about God or what you believe? Whenever um, I'm trying to get better at something or whenever I want to work on something, I have to come up with a plan. So um, under your chairs or in your hands, I'm not really sure where it is for you, but you're going to have a piece of paper and there's six questions. I want to really super fast explain the six questions um, and how I want you to answer this throughout the week. The what is, what is your question? What do you want to learn? What is that big question that you still have about God? How? How are you going to keep learning, and growing? What action steps do you need to take? When? When is a good time for you to set aside for God? Some people, me right now, love to get up at like 4.30 in the morning, and that's the time when I have to spend time with God. Some people are like, no way, I'll see you tonight, God. That's fine. Just pick a time. Where 
have a specific spot in mind where you can focus on learning and growing with God. Why? Why are you doing this? Why is this question important to you? Why do you want to learn more about God? And who? Who else can you share with? Who can you bring along with you on your journey? Maybe even somebody who doesn't know about Jesus yet. Whatever it is and you want to learn, don't give up. And if it doesn't work, if you miss a day, starting in the next day, don't get discouraged and frustrated. I hope that you will choose to look, see, and learn from the greatest teacher that we have because Jesus teaches us new things and there is so much to learn. Let's pray. Father God, I'm so thankful for um, this group of students, Lord, who have already taken that first step to look and see and grow in you just by being here tonight. Lord, would you um, use this message to stir in their hearts those questions that they still have about their faith and about you, Lord? Lord, would you give them the courage and the boldness to go to someone they trust with their questions? Lord, would you give them the courage and the drive to find those answers in Scripture? Lord, would you continue to foster a love of learning and adventure with you? God, we love you and we praise you in your name. Amen. Thanks, guys. It's been real fun. Oh, all right, all right. I didn't tell the middle schoolers this because we were, I just didn't tell them. Okay, so you, the last zip line is like the super, it's super long. It's the greatest until it ends, okay? And it ends and you're just up hanging out on a platform and you have to get down. Now, it is, it is one thing to like jump out and know that you're going to be caught by the, you know, wire that's in the air. That's one way of trusting, right? Do you know what they told me at the top of this tower, platform, whatever? They said, just step off. I'm sorry, what? Just, just step off. You're fine. You're still hooked to your thing. You're, gonna, you're not going to hit the ground. You're fine. And it took me seriously like a, a long time. And of course, again, I was terrified. So what did they do? They made me go first. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, maybe I can turn around and like just fall back. And then I don't have to see. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't work. And so then I like, I like sit down because I'm like, maybe if I'm just closer to the ground, I was no closer to the ground. I'm like, maybe if I'm just closer to the ground, I can just like ease out. Eventually I made it, but it was terrifying. Uh, yeah, I did. And it was terrifying. And <laughs> I'm still hanging up on top of the platform. Uh, but, you know, this is the funny part. So I forgot to stand up when you get to the ground. And so I did end up on the ground very, very uh, lightly. And my dad thought that was hilarious. Well, he still had to go. And he has two artificial knees. He forgot to stand up, too. And so he was on the ground. And he had to, like, roll himself over. So that was, that was the last zip line. And it was quite an adventure. And I would go again tomorrow if I could.